Yeah, welcome everybody. We'll give it a few minutes. Yeah, we'll let people that. log on. We got Sophia. Hey, Sophia, guys, feel free to test out the chat section um, just to make sure that that all everything's getting through. I see some more people I recognize. They better come say hello. Give me a shout. Give, give us a shout out in the chat box. Hey, Kay. There we go. We got Kelly. Hey. Uh, Here's tonight. Yeah. All right. Kurt's on board. Good to see you. Yep. We'll give it a few minutes. Uh, how has Cozy been, by the way? How's things going? I've been insane. I've been insane. My, 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 one of my kids did her science fair tonight. So oh. I'm like the science fair nerd mom going, okay, okay, who won, who won? And they're not announcing it tonight. I'm like, ah, so. What was her project? She tested out three different types of masks to see which one was the most effective at blocking crap, basically. Wow. <laughs> That's smart. Good. My yeah. other daughter, she actually tested satch feet and compared them to dynamic response feet. So that was wow. Like, There's yeah. that. Um, that's interesting. We've got a bunch of feet to talk about tonight. Um, that that is really interesting. I want to see all the anatomy toys that you brought, Greg. Okay. Well, uh, you're going to be proud of me. And uh, there's parts everywhere. I've got jaws and feet and vertebrae and cranial caps. I, I've got the best. Well, you, I got to say it straight up. You're the one who inspired me. You've always got these great models. And I'm, I'm always kind of like, well, you know, this is the socket. But I've got knees. And, you get jealous. Yeah, mine are all in part. So I don't, I, I don't have the full bob. But I've got some great stuff to show how socket fits. You'll be proud of this one. <sighs> Look at that. that one. Isn't that awesome? Cool. Uh, I got full legs, so I'm going to lean out of, out, of, out of frame here a bunch of time, but all these were all part of it. Tendon, infit, uh, you know, Gucci, Gucci, all the good stuff. Um, but again, it's just an eBay thing, Cozy. I was looking on there, and I'm always looking on well, eBay. I'm going to have to hit that up, because Bob here, he's not as anatomically as correct as he should be. So yeah. oh, Bob's, Bob's came with that. Uh, sad right now. He's got Bob. his clavicle dislocated and like, well, no, I, yeah, I'm feeling like we need to show Bob a little love with all this, <laughs> this going off kind of stuff. Bob, well, we love you, dude. I'm we do sorry. love you, Bob. He's do done good. He, he, he's inspired me. Um, but you know, interesting enough, the, I've got a couple femurs. I'll send you some. And I was actually going to cut one to try to uh, cut it and leave like a bone spur. Yeah. And I, I didn't get to it just to say, hey, you know what, a bone spur, that's what it is, you know, that we can all kind of envision what that is. So, yeah, I've got some things to actually uh, put in a little bit more uh, detail into these presentations because we've really worked hard on these. And, and with that, I'd like to really want to thank Vital Fit and Chris. We've done this for, it seems like it's just started yesterday, but it's been over a year, year and a half uh, supporting these webcasts. And, and we've got a great group of people that uh, always attend and hopefully have learned something. So thank you, everybody. I, I have to say thank you. Thanks, Cozy. Um, I'm so proud to be able to get up here and, and try to sound intelligent uh, when, when I'm following you. So you inspire me a lot. Uh, so that being said, um, I'm yeah. glad everybody's here. And I see Kay just uh, signed in. So hello, Kay. Um, Linda and so. Randy on board. All right. It's a party. So right on. Well, let's, let's, let's kick this off, shall we? Yeah. Go so ahead. I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. Our topic is the language of limb loss part two. Um, I'm Chris Arbacher with Vital Fit. Our two fabulous facilitators are here. Before I introduce them, please just put your comments, questions, anything you want to share in the chat area. We'll be sure to address those before the end of the webinar. Uh, Cozy Vioso has her master's in physical therapy. She's been in clinical practice over seven, can I say over 17 now? It's gonna be 19 in December. Okay, well, uh, okay. so 19, right? Time flies. 19 years in clinical practice. She has her own clinic, which specializes in limb loss in Florida. She also has an awesome live Facebook show dedicated strictly to limb loss called Cozy Talks every Wednesday night. So please check her out. 
Um, she's a bit of a unicorn. It's tough to find a PT that's um, got her expertise in limb loss. So welcome, Cozy. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a joy working with Vital Fit these past couple of years. Yeah, amen. Uh, with us also is Greg Menino. He's a certified practitioner. Uh, and I go back as far as dirt. So I don't know, it's been like <laughs> 20 years that um, we've been in the prosthetic industry. So he's worked with manufacturers uh, as a clinical specialist, as well as an RD. He happens to be an AK himself. <sighs> Two-time world champion, uh, silver medalist in the Olympics and 22-time medalist in alpine downhill skiing. And it's only taken me like two years to so get that right. I think I got it. So welcome. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, yeah. Gosh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, uh, it's a lot. We start thinking about my, uh, talking about my ski career. I kind of changed my office around. So right back there is a bunch of, par that's Paralympic stuff hanging on the wall. And I always, I, I did that to kind of inspire myself daily to go remember those days when you used to be so young and uh, and other times I look at it and go that's where all the pain comes from <laughs> <laughs> um, but that being said yeah thank you it's it's a pleasure to be here um, tonight we're talking on on our second part of the you know the language of limb loss and cozy around the first uh, series talking about what a PT, uh, what, what the terminology of a PT says, what she's talking about, what she's talking about in anatomy. And this, this part's all about what your process is talking about. And some of us, and I'll be the first one to raise my hand, will start talking in terms of what, what is he talking about? And I, I as a user patient, I, I did the same thing. I'd be like, what? It made me, it, interesting enough, I, uh, I got to shut my phone off. I'm sorry. It made me go into prosthetics to understand what I was living daily. And I wanted to know the terms. I wanted to understand the alignment. And it, it drove me into a career. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I think uh, how we start this off in my mind was let's talk about K-levels. Um, I have a lot of patients that I've worked with that like, oh, I went for my habit test and I ended up as a K2 and they're kind of down about it. And they're like, oh, you know, that, and for me, and this is where cozy is so important. What comes in is if you're classified as a K2, that's fine. There's no reason you can't be a K3. And if you do cozy talk, strong bodies program, you can change your K levels in a month. In weeks, I'm oh, telling you. Program, Greg, you are. I, I'm awesome. telling you, I'm not. I'm not pitching, but this is the facts of the facts, people. And I, I'm just. I, I have to say it because um, I've had a lot of people really get bummed out. You know, really, really uh, go into even depressive states because oh, I'm a two, and I wasn't feeling that great that day, and and this or that. So, what I will say when you're going for your classifications. Eat your Wheaties, get your rest, hydrate, and get ready for the best workout you can you've ever done. Be because that's just going to improve the quality of your life when you start getting some of the latest and greatest cool prosthetic stuff. We'll talk about in a little bit. So, um, but training, physical therapy, these will uh, will change that K level. So. That being said, uh, the K levels, does anybody, can anybody in the chat box throw up what they're classified as a K level? I'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. um, what I, and I'm going to read right from script right here, what K levels are. Um, there's typically four K levels. There's a K level zero um, and uh, does not have the ability to ambulate, does not have uh, uh, or transfer safely with or without assistive of dice, a device. So a prosthesis does not enhance their quality of life. Okay. I don't know. I will, I'll, I'm a process and I, I, I'm going to speak for you, Josie. I'll argue that because mm -hmm. just, just the physically emotional part of looking down and seeing a leg there, regardless if I can get up or not is so important for your rehab. So K level one, zero, I'm not sure I agree with, and I've always been that guy, but that's just who I am. Yeah. Um, uh, and if anybody's crazy enough, K3, I like it. I'm, I'm gonna miss some of this. Uh, so I'm gonna let Cozy maybe read some of the chat. Um, K yeah. level one. So wait, Greg, I'm gonna interrupt you just for a moment, I'm sorry. 
Randy, okay, yes, we can see what you're writing, Randy. And I meant to answer your question earlier. Yes, this is part two. So this is kind of like what the process talks about. Part one, if you missed it, Randy, you can go back to the Vital Fit website and catch it there. That's basically all of the PT lingo and jargon that we use there. So yes, okay. you're in the right place tonight. Go. Well, good. Everybody, and, and I missed that. So uh, if you can keep on that, because I've got a lot to go over, but uh, you have your PT right now, right here. Ask the question, people. Um, it's okay. Uh, um, cause we have her here. We're here to help. And that's why we're doing this. Um, so well, okay, I'm, level intrigued. One. I'm intrigued. Hold on, Greg. So about this saying, mm -hmm. she's a K3. K3 and she can't even walk with crutches. And then we've got K who started as a K3 and is moving to a low K4. And guys, as Greg describes the K levels, you're going to see why we have so many problems with this particular system. It was created 30 years ago, Greg. 30 years ago. Yeah. And they just kind of threw up these guidelines and they're very basic. They're not very detailed. So you're going to see some people like Beth, who's considered a K3, even though she's walking with a pair of crutches still. Okay. And we're going to get a little bit more into that right now after Greg finishes uh, talking about the different K levels. Right. So, and, I, and I'm, I'm, those are great questions. Uh, I think there should be seven K levels as a process. I, I think having uh, this four level system just doesn't define it enough. Um, so it's a gray area. Um, I used to joke, and this is true with guys, oh, I'm a K2. I go, but you're a K3 when you trip and you're accelerating to the ground. <laughs> now you're a K3. People would look at me like that dude's crazy, but um, you know, I you try to put it, bring a lot of little bit of humor into stuff, and uh, some people think it's funny, but others, well, whatever. So, um, K level one, did I go over that? I'm already lost. Um, K level one has the ability or potential to use the processes for transfers or ambulation on on level surfaces at a fixed cadence, typical of a limited or unlimited household ambulator. Okay, so. Sometimes I'm a K1. Sometimes I'm walking at a single speed, enjoying the outdoors. So I'll say, hey, not so bad. I can become a K2 pretty quickly. Um, so just be positive about it if you're, if you're classified currently there. Mm -hmm. K level two has the ability or potential of, with, for ambulation with the ability to transverse low level environment barriers such as curbs, stairs, or uneven services typical of the com limited community ambulator. So a long time that descriptor of K2 was always K3. If you can negotiate a very cadence and step over a curb, man, you're a three. That's how I looked at it. So uh, any thoughts on it, uh, Cozy, throw it in. But uh, yeah. And for me, it's interesting because I'm like, if you can negotiate a curb, if you can negotiate, those are a ramp. Those are kind of some of the more challenging parts of negotiating in a community along right. with very cadence. So for me, I'm like, I don't know if I agree with that being, I'm like, if you can negotiate a curb on your own safely, I, I'm kind of thinking you're more of a K3 level. But again, right. this is where just some of these. Yeah. Well, in, in, in the real world, we're going to encounter all these obstacles and uh, practice doing PT, practicing these obstacles is very important because um, not that we want to be classified as a, Q, uh, a K level two, but we can change that pretty quickly. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit of feed. I know this is going to go long tonight. And I apologize, but uh, there's some cool stuff for K2. I don't know what to say. I mean, back in the day, it was a sad fit. Okay. Um, so K level three has the ability or potential for ambulation with variable cadence. And that's the big one they want to they want to really go on. Can you speed up or slow down? I know K twos that they'll move quick to get out of the way from traffic. So I'm like, okay, you're classified at two, but you can go across that crosswalk quicker because you don't want to get run over by the bus. So that's my argument for that patient. Mm -hmm. um, Typical of a community ambulator who has the ability to transverse most environmental barriers and may have vocational therapeutic or exercise activities that demand prosthetic utilization beyond simple locomotion. So we all fall into K3 a lot. I, I just think that's most people. 
I think that's a lot of, I mean, and granted there's cases that are gonna be outside this, but understanding uh, your these levels as a user is pretty important to your outcome of your real rehab. And if you're put through a PAVIT test or some of these tests we'll talk about it or the, or the you know, the AMP test, that's when you can shine and put your aspirations out there. What I want to do, what I used to do, I'm going to do it again. And, and this is where motivation um, comes. Uh, I'm not saying lie on the form, but I'm going to say, yeah, I can move quicker if I want to kind of theory. Um, so any thoughts on that, Cozy? And then we'll move in the camera. Well, yeah, basically when I, when I see a patient for the first time, especially if I get to the patient before they've ordered their foot or leg and I can help and be on the team with the processes just to figure out, okay, what is it that's going to work best for this patient? It's what is this patient's lifestyle? What are the requirements for the lifestyle? What are the reasonable goals that we know this patient is going to be able to achieve with continued physical therapy treatment, right? And let's start there. And we pick out the foot, we pick out the system, and then we go, all right, what are the K levels going to tell us? Okay. And how can we demonstrate to the insurance company that this patient is in fact AK2, AK3 level um, and design the treatment from there? The kind of cool, the one kind of cool thing about some of these K tests that I use, the functional tests that I use, like the AMP Pro, um, the 10 meter walk test, all these functional tests that help me determine K2 <coughs> patient. Within those functional tests, they have certain actions that help me indicate this is where the patient is having trouble. So with certain transfers, and that also helps me focus my treatment and saying, you know what, that is a functional transfer that we need to do anyways. That's something you need to learn in your daily life anyways. So not only are we improving your K-level score, but we're also improving your functional mobility. So for me, that's my one like redeeming grace about having to do these functional tests uh, <laughs> for the K-level testing is it can really pinpoint where the patient is having a problem. And guys, okay. hey, I'm sorry, my ring light just blew out. So I'm going to go dark, but I'm a little intrigued. So Randy's an upper. Yeah. And um, between Bach and my experience with SPS and various manufacturers, I, I, I got quite a lot of experience in upper. And I'm intrigued by the question, how is that determined on uppers, the K level? Because I, I don't know the answer to that, which is kind of sad. So, you I mean, is that, that, is, that okay. an OT, is that an OT thing? versus yeah, the majority I, so like pts who work with amputees are unicorns therapists who work with upper extremity amputees i don't know what goes beyond unicorn there's even less and typically you'll see so for example the first thing that comes to mind is bambi lombardi yes um, she's an occupational therapist and phenomenal and i'm dying to meet her at some point um but i can set that i can set that up she would be the person to ask she would be the person to ask that's actually right. um Jamie, would you put my e? Well, I can do it. Um, I want to. I want to put my email address in here, Randy. So uh, reach out to me, um, and I will hook you up with Bambi. Yep. Great. Um, there's some great questions, and while you guys are talking, and I'm reading yeah. through. I, I, I do agree with Beth here. There's a lot of research going on. Uh, this whole thing. There could be more K levels than are currently in in our four or. Um, uh, current system. So it's good to see. I love Kay's research. She's, you know, saying she's a gray haired older woman who's being, you know, showing. So uh, that uh, I got to scroll further down to read exactly what she said. But um, for the upper extremity, I know it's a lot of dexterity stuff. I'm not an upper. I'll be the first one to say uh, I, when I took my boards, I, I aced my uppers because I never did uppers. Um, I'm a lower extremity specialist, so I don't have an answer, but I will find the answer for there, uh, for you on that one. We got someone, Kelly. Kelly is an OT and certified hand therapist with Hanger and West Coast, on the West Coast, excuse me, and she's taking over Bambi's retirement. Kelly? Oh, oh awesome. she's she on. Okay, okay, so yeah, Kelly, we're pulling you in. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, so as these come in, we'll try to read these questions. I want to, we got a, still a ton to go over. And I think I started my timer because I always go way over, uh, but I didn't. Um, oh, um, hey, Greg, before yeah. we like move, let's um, let's give some stuff away because okay. that's super fun. 
Let's go over. Um, can, can we do K level four and then we'll go, we'll give it away. So the, the final last descriptor, real quick, Chris. So, I'm sorry, absolutely. Um, yeah, real quick, one more, and then we're going to do some how this is all, how they subject you to and, and figure out how you are. So um, K level four has the ability or potential for prosthetic ambulation that exceeds basic ambulation skills, uh, exhilarating high impact stress or energy levels. Typical of prosthetic demands of a child, active adult, or amputee, or, 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 or athlete, excuse me. So I believe most people are okay for, if you've got to move and get the heck out of the bus's way, you're going to show some real um, promise to doing that maybe uh, you wouldn't have do in, in normal life. So I agree with what Beth says here. It's going to be it's pretty awesome that how quick and I mean, if there's a bear running down the trail at me when I'm hiking, I'm all of a sudden a K7 because I'm getting out of the way uh, kind of theory. And I think as a patient and how I try to encourage the patients I work with is be, you know, dr dream it, believe it and do it kind of theory in your life. Uh, uh, and, and eat your Wheaties prior to your next palate test. So with that, we're going to give away the first giveaway. Excellent. And then we're going to move on. Okay. Yeah. okay. So uh, first giveaway is for a travel kit. It has all four products, a nice two ounce version of each, travel friendly. Jamie's um, put the link in the chat box. So please take Take a look at it. Let us know uh, first two or three words, and then she's going to randomly pick a winner uh, momentarily. So, uh, uh, I love Kay's. Well, while we're while you're all looking at that, Kay's uh, hikes in Alaska, and she her statement is she always hike with somebody who's slower than you, uh, and she says it's usually me. So, uh, I don't know. Um, Agreed. I'm uh, I'm I'm going to be the one who's ran down by the bear. Uh, so I always say so. I'm the guy who carries the the bear spray or the big pistol. So, um, but that's a good comment. That's cute. And uh, Kelly answered, and she says they don't use the K levels for upper extremities. It's usually outcome measures for functional ability, but we don't have anything specific to amputee, and that doesn't surprise me. Unfortunately, but yeah. that's oh great answer, great uh, answer. I always thought it was a dexterity test that I recall. Um, but K level doesn't apply. Good. So even old dogs like me can learn. So thank you, Kelly. Yeah. No, so it's basically the, it's probably, you know, because OTs will have their functional tests the way the physical therapists do. So they're basing it off the functional tests, which I think is a bit more accurate because you can combine different functional tests to demonstrate different, different facets. So yeah. All right, guys, keep participating. It's going to be a random draw of anybody who puts in a correct answer. So Put your correct answer in there. Okay, good. So as we're letting that uh, Vanna time go, um, how to how to there, there's quite a few tests that are currently going on. Uh, uh, Amputee the uh, the amp test. Um, I know Cozy probably uses that. There's the Pavit test. There's the uh, PQE or PEQ test they use. There's the Tug test. Um, the timed walk tests. Uh, the distance walk test, and all these are kind of like the Medicare uh, prerequisite to uh, the for the process or the the orthodox or the pro or the PT to evaluate how well you can do and where you end up at NK level. So, so again, when it comes to that day as a as an amputee and a process, I'm going to say, get ready. Uh, rest up, hydrate, and, and perform the best you can perform on that day. Because you know what? And it's not set in stone. And I'm going to tell you again, uh, you do PT, you follow strong body. Those things will change your K level so rapidly that you're not, you're not caught in this, in this K K2 trap kind of. Um, and that being said, I got probably one of the coolest things that came came to be about K2 feet out there was this Avalon from Indolite. You know, there's a lot of, uh, or from Blatchford, excuse me. There's a lot of, in the past, there wasn't feet like this fit that gave, and you basically got a flexible kill or a satch fit or some, something like that. They have hydraulic ankles that are functional for, for K2. So there's some cool material out there, even if that's where you start. 
And uh, so uh, if that gives you hope or not, I think that's great. It, when you're learning a prosthesis as a new user, having a movable ankle or hydraulic ankle that gets that foot flat, that's stability, that's knee stability, that's security. And I think that's important. I, uh, I'll be the first guy to say, as you progress and become more active, I'm not real crazy personally about hydraulic ankles. Um, and I know, I know Cozy loves them. I know every, there's a lot of people loves them. I just think that when I read the studies, I was part of the development of some of these products that they reduced uh, pressures in the socket. They did this, they did that. All I felt was there was more weight at my ankle kind of theory. So that's just me talking. Don't take it. Um, don't let me uh, discourage you if you have this foot. It's, it's cool. And baby, technology. it's all about socket fit. Right. right. Well, I know. Come on, we're talking fit. about weight. Let's talk about socket fit. Well, you know what? We used That's to talk about job. that. Well, yeah, good saying. point, Chris. Good That's point. We used to talk job. about it doesn't matter if you had a broom handle under that socket. If that socket's right, you're going to do well. Mm -hmm. So, so, but there's cool stuff for K2 or K1. Just they, it's out there. So I had to throw these samples in here. Um, just to let you know, it's not, that's not anywhere near the end of the world. And you're going to, if you end up with something like that, you're going to keep progressing and keep progressing and doing your PT, doing your strong body, and you're going to become a, a, a K3 or a K4. Um, I've had many, many patients that I've worked with over all these years, because I've been involved in this 40 years, that they're like, I want to run, Greg. I want to run. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm like, well, okay, when's the last time you ran? Back in 73. And I go, okay, we're going to go. Let's go. We're going to run, you know, and I'm the first one to encourage. Hell yeah. Let's just go do this. And back in the days when I started running, you guys, I'll date myself. We were running on Sats feet or Seattle feet, flexible keel, dynamic response. We didn't have any of, there it is. It goes, he has it. That's what we had. So don't be discouraged if you, if you think you have something lesser of is where my whole thought and theory process is going here. Um, and then we go into, there's some super cool stuff when you really become a runner that we can go into running blades. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, it's all on you as the patient to increase your outcome daily. So, um, so any questions anymore? I'm not reading. I'm not even looking at the chat. I'm so sorry, you guys. And let me, I can go back in that. Um, We've got our winner. first winners, uh, Stephen O. Stephen O. Yeah, Stephen O, there Great. he is. And he says, socket fit is my issue, but I think I'm a K4. So Stephen, okay. I'm curious, have you been, have you ever been formally tested for K levels? Because this is what I find sometimes is my patient will come in and they're like, yep, I was told I'm a K2. And I go, well, did they do any testing? And they say, no, nope. they just kind of took a look at me, asked me some questions and assigned me a K level. Um, so again, it's one of those things, guys, that you need to find the prosthetist and you need to find the physical therapist that do these functional tests. And typically it's the, in, in my area, anyways, the prosthetist will refer the patients to me to do the, the functional testing. And then I send it back over to them. Um, but depending on where you live. So that's just something you can kind of bring up to your, your prosthetist. Great. Well, that's a good point. Now I think, uh, Socket fit can be an issue for all of this, and that's why we have Vital Fit. And I'm this is a perfect time to talk about how important it is to take care of your skin. I don't care how great your prosthetist is. I consider myself a pretty good prosthetist. I consider my socket, I don't know, 98%. Is it perfect? No. But I'm getting that other missing percentage because of Vital Fit. And, and, and that's a fact. You know, I'm too lazy to go redo my stuff. I'll just be that guy. But it's good and when it, and I can go on big hikes, I can do what I want to do in comfort because I have, I'm addressing the skin issue that a lot of these sockets will create. Now, if you're a K4 and your process looked at you when they walked in and go, yeah, K4, you're either a big guy, you're, you need K4 componentry because of your overall sheer mass and size and potential of just being King Kong, that's fine too. I'm okay with that kind of thing concept and thinking. Um, it's just what it is. I mean, you got to really remember that. So um, the it's a two-edged sword though. You get all the cool stuff and then you become super active. What, the first thing that breaks down, your skin. So you got to really think about that. And that's why we're here and why Vital Fits here and why Vital Fit was designed. So 
Um, so I know we're a half hour in. We've got a lot more stuff to talk about here. Um, and I and I haven't really got even into terms that process talk about. So I'm going to throw a bunch of terms out there and let me know if your process has said these to you and not really explain them. Abduction, abduction, uh, inversion, eversion, varus moment, valgus moment, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Um, Backs, backs from school right now. I'm like, oh. I know. So it's all these terms that we are just we take for granted as a prosthetist. Um, that I may go, hey, I need an abductor socket. I'm on a dorsal flexion fit. Okay. Most patients are like, good patients. I trust you. I trust you. Just do it and make it better for me. So, and then if that's the relationship you have with your patient or your prosthetist, that's awesome. And that you're confident that that he understands what you need and that adjustment is gonna improve your, your gait or your outcome or your ability to do more. But knowing those terms, and if you just Google some of those terms out there, Google's the best thing in the world because it'll explain all these different things that you may be hearing but not understanding. But be a question asker. That's one thing that I've always been that guy. It's like, when it came to sports or prosthetics or I'm like, but wait a second, what happens when we mix that color wax with that color wax for this temperature and the ambient temperature and humidity is that. And I'd get these guys looking at me going, it doesn't matter. Just think about what you're supposed to think about. I'm like, so that being said, ask the questions. If you hear those terms, again, if you're talking about abduction, hang on, the parts of where? A deduction. Here's something pretty cool to show everybody. Anyhow, A B A B A B A B adduction this way out A B in uh, some of the things. If they flex your socket in the in this plane, okay, this is a needle. They're going to flex your socket if they're going to extend your socket. So just so you know what this process is doing unless you just flat trust them that they're doing the right thing so but if they made an adverse uh, adjustment that all of a sudden i'm getting more groin pain maybe they a deducted or abducted your socket too much so i used to be a big proponent and a lot of abduction in the socket and or trying to uh, take your natural pelvis and align that femur in that socket that is aligned naturally. Uh, so you see a lot of sockets that are really under the patient. That can create distal limb problems. And forever we did that a lot. We don't do it as extreme anymore. So that being said, um, just think about those little things that may irritate you after an adjustment. You may feel more pressure on areas that you're not accustomed to feeling pressure on. And uh, that may be a good time to throw up that slide, Paul, and talk about taller pressure, and then we'll get into some, really what uh, Cozy was talking about last week about issue containment and how that socket's supposed to look. So I threw these slides in here, and I know everybody, listen, this is a lot of stuff to look at. I can send these to you. Uh, these are on Autobox website, and they're for you to understand as a patient, your pressure, pressure tolerant and pressure sensitive areas okay there's a lot to look at um i think it's almost easier just to put it up there and, and envision in your own mind where i'm feeling pain if i am feeling pain if i'm feeling no pain then hail to your prosthetist if i'm strong as an ox then hail to your pt but um pressure sensitive if you've got a, like right on your kneecap if you're a transtibial amputee uh just in pressure areas if you're feeling pain is at the end of that uh that femur um i really just thought i'd throw this in because again we're here to help we're here to educate and this was a very important slide when i went through school i just focused on these two slides like hey this is what I don't want to do to somebody, and this is what I do want to do. So um, if you want us to put that, we could probably throw that in the chat box, too, if you want to look at these. But these two slides are on Autobox website, and they're, and they're pretty cool. So if you're one day feeling some lateral condyle or femoral condyle pain, that, that's not supposed to be there. Or um, let's just say you're feeling some ramus pain. 
Now there was a long, if you're a transfemoral patient, there was a long time guys tried to encapsulate your, your ischium and your ramus into the socket for better stability. Can you take a, a bunch of ramus pain mm, or pressure? Not for long, I'll just tell you that. And if you're, you're female, it gets closer to your, your uh, anatomy. It's they're just very intimate. So um, just, just be aware, this is all about just knowing what's there and what's, uh, uh, if you're feeling pain in some places, you know, take a snapshot of this or screenshot this if you have that uh, capability and we can, uh, or we'll email it to you and you can share this with your prosthetist because a lot of time, if you just point to my condyle head and go, kind of hurts right there, um, it's better to be able to have the picture. I mean, picture tells a, a, a million stories. So uh, anything to add to that, uh, Cozy? No, I'm just kind of reading on Melinda's comment. She said, when I had a traumatic event this year and became a right above the knee amputee, I was always told to ask many questions and speak up about discomfort or any others with an issue with a prosthetic. And, and Melinda, you're absolutely right. A prosthesis should never hurt. Um, it can be a little bit, it can be uncomfortable to get used to wearing a prosthesis, but pain is not something that should be associated with using a prosthesis. Um, and the only way your process is going to know about that is obviously if you communicate that to them. Um, so when it comes to the landmarks that Paul just had up there, and again, I joke around with Bob all the time, but I do love having something like this because I just tell my patient point to where it hurts on Bob. Uh, and they'll point to there, or they'll point on themselves that they're having kind of trouble just verbalizing where it is that it hurts. I just say point to where it hurts. And that gives me the landmarks. It's a little easier to see on a skeleton, right? where all those landmarks are. Um, to, so as to what should have pressure and what should not have pressure. Well, uh, and, and let me add to that too. I, I think if your traumatic in, you know, injuries create other issues that are uh, can translate in prosthetic fit, I think, it, I mean, if your leg was ripped off in a motorcycle, you know, those, I don't want to be so graphic, but that being said, um, there shouldn't be specific, like if you feel like you're being strangulated in the socket and you can feel your pulse in your socket, then that's just too tight. That's just, that's, you know, it's basic mechanics of prosthetics. So, um, I think it's good to understand, uh, like Cozy said, be able to point to that spot and, and try and be very verbal and explain the sensation you're having. And that and that's huge because if you don't say it, uh, I used to go around this country for years and years fixing problems that uh, were blamed on programming of knees or, or, or microprocessor ankles or this or that, but it, it wasn't typically that. I'll just say it was uh, alignment generated stuff that were creating these issues. So so be diligent. You're the one driving the bus. I know I said that I've said that for a year. If you're not in charge of your own care, it's going to be hard to have someone understand to give you the best care possible. So that just being said, uh, be boisterous, talk a lot. Um, so I wanted to throw this up to again, this beautiful oh, wait, model. Uh, hey, wait, oh, go ahead. We go. Wait, what? Yeah, maybe uh, it's time for another giveaway because well, we are running. We are uh, we're so gonna run a long time. <laughs> Beth, Beth's got a question. Okay, I didn't. I, I'm, what, I'm not. Is, what is the difference between a hydraulic ankle and a static hydraulic ankle? Great, that's awesome. Okay. Do you need to be a K4 in order for it not to be static? Um, good question, Beth. And gosh, I've got samples and samples and samples, and I'm glad you asked me. Okay, that's not. Um, a static hydraulic ankle uh, would be back in the days of hydrocadin, maybe. Um, today we have several different, and I have Blatchford, I have some Blatchford products here. Um, and depending on that patient's uh, activity level, if I was to start you just on like a Blatchford, Avalon, K2 type angle, I'm going to crank down these resistance uh, to lock out that hydraulic so you're not feeling so unstable or all that movement, which can create a feeling of instability. So, um, so if you, I don't really know that there's a purely static hydraulic ankle out there, but we will crank them down. We'll take a, 
microprocessor version of it and we'll crank up those resistances on the on the laptop so it almost feels static and then as you progress into that we can reduce those resistances so you're feeling more ankle movement so i don't know if that's really answering your question but um, uh, I can't imagine there's just a, a static hydraulic ankle out there that's going to give you any, any benefit other than weight, excuse me, I'm reaching out. Um, we have these echelons, here's another one, that are great. But again, a lot of times when we first started setting up these echelons, we would lock down plantar flexion and dorsiflexion to take away that instability feeling that First time you, if you've had a static ankle your whole life, um, some type of K3 fit that is a carbon J shape, blah, blah, blah. All that movement um, typically makes patients uh, uncomfortable initially and uh, unsure. So we would lock those down. And then as they progress, we would back those off. And then they would find that aha moment. So um, that's kind of the best answer to that because i don't know cozy i don't think there's just a static hydraulic ankle out there so oh and i'm glad you answered the question first because i saw the question i'm like i don't know if i've seen it referred to that way ever before like a difference between and it's exactly what you said is you adjust the the amount of friction available in the hydraulic fluid um and and same goes for when you do microprocessor knees right um, that's right so, and, and it's exactly that, you know, if you want more stability, then you have less movement. Okay. Right. You, that's the, the balance that you have to find. If you want more movement, you're going to have overall less stability. Um, so you have to either wean the patient into using a more mobile, less stable ankle to give them more movement um, or the opposite. You got to back off and give them more stability and decrease the amount of movement. So they're a little more stable on those feet. Um, so that's kind of how I view hydraulic. Yeah, and, and that's that's how it is, uh, especially if you've always had kind of a static, and I, I say static ankle, K3 type, uh, here's another one, you know, Autobuck, another great product, but these are not dynamic, and they do not have that dynamic movement as a hydraulic ankle. So your prosthetist maybe would have that thing cranked down so it felt felt like it had no movement, but that was intentionally to give you more security. So, um, and we, we did that forever programming Elons or setting up these, these ankles. So um, they're all cool. I think it's a great option. I think if you're aspiring to be a super athletic K4, K5, you know, five, whatever you want to call yourself, maybe not the best thing. Maybe it's your cruiser fit. That's kind of how I look. I love the Elan. I'm just, I know. You sold yeah, more than I, anybody. I, I know. I know. I'm not saying they're bad. No, no so I actually just, cried. But, like patients no. and I cried when they went up and down ramps and they were just like, oh my God. It's like, you know, you go from a ski boot that doesn't move to this just, just. It's movable. Oh, like, yeah. Sweet. Right. Yeah. But it's like so many poignant moments. Speaking of which, time for a giveaway. So yeah. Jimmy's going to um, put because after this, we've still got the survey. We're going to do the full uh, full size four part kit. So Jamie's putting a link. Please check it out. And because oh, thank thanks to our fabulous facilitators, uh, we've got a uh, extensive library of information. Everything limb loss and diabetes. Um, amazing information. So anything you missed, check it out. So um, she's posted it. And please let us know what you see and we will win a travel kit. Okay. okay. Good. So, Give me a second to grab some Beth, stuff. I think so, Beth, she mentioned hers is a static hydraulic, no microprocessor. So I think, uh, and I'm trying to interpret what Beth is trying to say with the whole static hydraulic unit, you know, with the microprocessor unit, it's reading the sensors. So it's adjusting that friction, right? So that's the basic difference between a hydraulic unit and a hydraulic microprocessor unit. Um, so it's, it's already built in a little bit more. So you're gonna have a little bit more of an adjustment as you go. That's kind of what makes the Elan kind of awesome in that regard. Right. Um, so that's, I think maybe what you're trying to, but we, yeah, I, static mm -hmm. is not the word I think I would use for that. Um, microprocessor or non-microprocessor. 
Well, how about, I, I think, and good point, because um, as I read that and thought, uh, you, you make me think, uh, maybe she's uh, thinking uh, she had an, uh, a real uh, echelon, and that's not an active microprocessor controlled ankle, so that may be passive. I know there's other companies who make some hydraulic ankles out there, uh, Freedom and stuff, but so once you and once you introduce a microprocessor, it's monitoring that train change, those speeds, and adjusting correctly. So that may be uh, where active versus passive is being defined. Uh, and that's why they did it, because people, people were like, oh, this is great. I love the way this ankle function is, uh, but it's one speed. So that was the theory and process of coming with the Elan, or the Echelon that's programmed. I'm sorry, feet and lawn uh, that's programmable and gives you like those second and third gears that you're looking for when you're ascending or descending. So, so yeah. good point. Good, good, good answer. Good answer. She's got the freedom. I think it's called the Connects. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, that's the freedom. Right. Yeah. Is the Connects. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not super versed in, in the freedom feet. Uh, we did a ton of renegades in the past, you know, a lot of that, that type of fit. So when it comes to uh, that microprocessor fit, I, I, I got to be truthful. I just don't have a lot of uh, background in it. I'm, I, when it comes to the blatcher feet, I got them all. So, uh, cause that's what I did forever. So, oh, I just noticed I got a broken flechette on my, uh, my pelvis here. So as we move on, because I know we are, we're running late and I'm going to go over real quick. Um, we, there were some questions on socket fit, ischial containment versus sub -ischial. So I'll try to do a demonstration. I have uh, my, my, my Bob's pelvis here. Ischial containment, when you become an amputee, remember, if you go with that ischial containment, your ischium, remember Cozy talking about this, your ischium is your ischium. That's inside the socket, okay? Oh. So this is left because it is left you're gonna be burying in that socket deep. These sockets get intimate, they go down there, but that's what gives you that great gait and, and keeps that pelvic uh, lurching, uh, non-controlled uh, gait that I see a lot out there. Sub-ischial, you can end up in some of this. Sub-ischial when you're ischium out of the socket. So just so you know, as a patient, I'm a big proponent of ischial containment. I just think everybody should be in that because you got to get a little bit more intimate on how it fits. It's getting in areas that vital fit sure helps, especially because these sockets are up there. But I wanted to show this because we talked about it on numerous shows. Ischial containment is in there, okay? That is in the socket. Ramal containment, they used to have the sockets coming all the way up in here which got a little bit aggressive for some patients. So just to give you a mental picture, I thought I had to show that. Plus I'm all proud of my, uh, my pelvis. That, cool. I, it, that is a cool pelvis, man. Isn't that cool? That's that awesome. Cool? I, you can even show rotation. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, the, the uh, femurs move a little bit, but not much. But, um, uh, so real quick, I know we're running short and we're gonna have a third giveaway and that one's coming up, but I've got a, uh, talk about a few feet because we did say, hey, it's a cool time to be an amputee. I'll tell you that. I'm an amputee 40 years. My first fit was a wooden, uh, my first fit, my first uh, foot was a satch fit, but my first prosthesis was a wooden, carved from wood, gorgeous craftsmanship, just amazing. I wish I still had it. But that being said, we've got some innovations in prosthetics that from the what we probably all wear and see today from laminates, that I wear laminates, you know, carbon socket, which I, I, I love their bomb proof. So I've got a company in front of mine that's doing this kind of cool stuff now. So for all you wearing BOA, because we know we have a lot of BOA system wearers, we have incorporated 3D printed stuff available to us today with BOA, with a lot of the BOA systems have a window and a glue pad in there and that pad, that whole window moves. This company is coming up with these little pads that you can change out these little beautiful little spongy. I mean, they like follow contours like my square head. Look at that, it's square on my head. Um, but they follow your anatomy very well. So if you can get look down in there, you can change them out depending on your activity or your volume. The perforation in the socket is to dissipate heat. 
and or like, hey, I need a little bit more uh, lateral pressure. I'm gonna put one of these pads, I'm gonna stick it in that hole there. And guess what? I got a little bit more pressure if I need it. So again, I wanna talk about, it's a cool time because technology between 3D printing is here. And uh, it's not only just for us, the transfemoral guys, because I'm always that guy and I apologize. Here's the transtibial. And any pattern you want, they're made out of TPE, they're printed, they're, this still has that, that uh, comfort pad technology that you can change those pads. And, and this is where we're going, I think, in prosthetics. And um, if anybody has 3D printed socket, put it in the chat box. I just I, I love showing the latest and greatest because this is our probably our last podcast for the year. This is this is where we're going, folks. This is what's gonna make my job or Cozy's job better and easier. And we're really gonna, you're going to excel. Uh, Jennifer just put in there, what are those called? This is the quorum, quorum quattro. So if you Google quorum. Um, you, they have information. I can try to put it up there. I can type it in. Um, it is a clinic, but this is going to be taught to everybody nationally. Uh, it's such a cutting edge technology. These guys are going to do very well and everybody's going to have it because it cuts down a manufacturing time. Uh, adjustments are easily done. Reprints are easily done. Uh, the ability to change out the, the quorum pads or the comfort cells is very easy. You just undo the boa, loosen it up, pull the string out, put a bigger one on. So it's not like we have a fixed plate. So I think boa system that probably most people on here uh, are wearing uh, today, most most our, our patients are wearing boa. This is just the smarter boa, you know. So And that's what we love about technology, why I keep saying, it's a good time to be an amputee because this super cool stuff is coming available to you today. So, uh, Stephen, uh, Steve-O, who makes this one? This is Quorum Orthopedics or Quorum Prosthetics. They're out of Windsor, Colorado. Um, they're training around the country, and we will be helping them train people how to do this and, and, uh, and supply this technology. Uh, they're even looking at that you could take your scan socket. If you have a great fitting socket, send it to them, scan it. They'll print you, print you out a socket, and you're you're good to go. So, um, so this is a, that's a cool time, you guys, and what's coming in our world in 2022. So that's pretty cool for a transtibial socket. I'll tell you that. Neat stuff, huh, Cozy? Amazing. Um, on top of that, yeah, and on top of that, I know we're going to have a survey, and we need to put that survey up because we're running late tonight. Um, I'm going to let uh, Chris, you want to throw that survey up? And then that. Oh, I just want to say shout out to Melinda yes. for winning the travel kit. Good. Um, please uh, let us know your email address, or um, I'll put mine in again. Let me know where you're at so we can send that to you. Um, congratulations. So Jamie is going to put in a link uh, to our survey. And so the cool thing is if you fill it out, we're going to randomly pick someone and you're going to win $60 worth of full-size products. Um, this is really important to us because we're committed to the community. We want to continue to be supportive and your input is very, very important And so far as moving forward what information you're interested in, um, how you feel about what we're doing, anything that you'd like us to do. So uh, it's highly appreciated to fill it out for us and uh, you might win some stuff. And guys, we really do look at those surveys, especially the whole team, but it gives us ideas as to what kind of topics you guys wanna hear about. So don't be shy, put all that information into those surveys. No. Right. That's important. And that's kind of where we're today uh, with our last two, uh, what the PT terminology is and what the process is. And there's so much to cover. There really is. But um, my angle tonight, and thanks for letting me sit here and blab on about it. And, and the initial uh, question was, what's a patella weight-bearing prosthesis? And I'll, I'll just show you. There's your knee and patella weight-bearing. We need weight-bearing on your patella. 
that was how this uh, webinar was um, initially designed because we had a question from you as uh, our audience. So um, there's things we didn't go over, but um, I think it's more important to understand that there's some really cool stuff coming. There's some really cool feet. By the way, this is ProFlex, my foot of choice. I love this fit. So if you have a chance to talk to your process, you are K3, you want a bomb-proof fit that is no maintenance, this is my fit of choice. And it's a crossover fit, so you don't have to have uh, one of these cool, super cool, like running blades. This is Obsidian, by the way, folks, um, which is super cool, but it's pretty specific. Um, if you have that uh, situation that you can um, have anything you want, this is cool. This is cool. There's so much cool stuff. So uh, I can't stop and reiterate that enough. It's a good time to be an amputee because you've really got some, uh, some, some neat componentry to get you back to normal and a healthy lifestyle and do what you want to do. So, so, but this is my, my, my go-to. I don't work for these people. I'm just telling you that they're, they're, they're bomb proof. They, they, uh, they're functional. They walk good. Thanks. I've super bombed that one too. I love just the whole crossover. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Here, here's, here's the downfall of the crossover real quick as we're talking because we still have a little time. If you're very, very cosmetic orientated in what your processes looks like, this is not the answer, okay? Because you're not going to be able to finish that shin to make it look like a normal leg. So just be aware of that. But what is kind of cool, there are a lot of fairing companies out there making really bitching cosmetic covers and stuff. And what I do for everybody, I don't know if anybody show this trick, these little fake tattoo arm covers, I use these to go over the shin fairing and it holds them in place. And then I can change my tattoos, you know, uh, or whatever that is. So some people, I, I've got pocket socks yet, Greg. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I see the sock socks. I don't That's have like one that. But this was the uh, this was the the predecessor to socket socks, yeah, yeah. fake arm tattoos. Um, they were huge forever. We used them forever. You can actually laminate them in and all that stuff. But uh, I, I, one of my good dear friends, Cactus Mosier, who is a, a, he's a musician, and I, I won't name and drop his wife, but very famous. Um, he laughed so hard. I set him up a cosmetic cover with a bunch of these, and he's like, "Wow, he would never do." a tattoo he's not that guy so he's like i can change my tattoo daily you know and that was one of his on stage performance stuff so so but there, there, there there's a lot of cool things available um, I, but I i love winona i mean i, I he's the why, best why can't we we can't i mean really right. well they're coming here skiing um <laughs> in a in a month so i'll tell you they're gonna hang out here at the house so you should come visit um but again, just recapping all the cool stuff, you guys, uh, if you get your prosthetist asking about the Quorum prosthetics or the Quorum Comfort Fit 3D Steve, there's all these different sizes of comfort cells they make available that come with the prosthesis, depending on your activity levels or your hydration levels that day, you just change these out. So I'm kind of sold on technology. Am I wearing it? No, I'm still in conventional skin fit issue containment old school old man old school um they broke, don't fix it all right right so good point because yeah i'm looking for that comment thank you i was trying to bait i was baiting you <laughs> you know you know you can't keep me quiet for long you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it if it ain't working for you then you need to find yourself a solution right and then look at that new stuff but yeah, yeah. um beth beth uh beth put in there uh, quorum, it's Q U O R R U M. Okay. Um, I can help you uh, email me. I can help you uh, get with those guys. I'm not, I don't work for them either, but I just think that what they're doing is so darn cool that that's where prosthetics is going and where, you know, where we are today at the end of 2021. We've got a lot of cool options um, to really excel. And we have Strong Body now to really have a program to follow yeah, as an amputee. So, we got strong I can't body, stand up for technology, it. And we got Sophia. Congratulations for winning. Did you get the six five? All right, because Sophia, nice, nice work. Oh, um, right nice on, work. Sophia. 
Um, I got to plug one more time. I know we're going at the end here and thanks for hanging in there, you guys. Uh, thanks to Vital Fit. Uh, I tell you something, uh, when I first met Chris and got with the Vital Fit program, I used to have chafing. And like I just said, I'm wearing usual containment, skid fit. I'm pretty active. I am older, but I'd always have some kind of irritation. I don't have that anymore. And that I'm a believer. I'm sold. I will live for the rest of my life using the vital fit because it's letting me do more in comfort. And those little moments of discomfort from even a perfect socket interrupts your thought process, your day, those days are over. So just, just uh, come on over, try the vital fit. If you haven't tried it there, it was designed for guys like me. I don't know. That's how I look at it. It was done for me. Um, and, and it, it, it'll improve your lifestyle. So I know um, because it's, it's, it. it's literally all about Greg and we love yeah, they made it for me. Awesome. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to be next with that. Uh, but we are, um, I just want to say thank you, Cozy, and thank you, Greg, because um, we're, we're very committed, as I mentioned, to the community and um, supporting everyone as much as we can. So please spread the love. Um, let people know that we've got um, an extremely large library of blogs and articles and webinars and information that... Greg and Cozy have worked extremely hard to share with the community. So Twitter, TikTok, you name it, just spread the love, please, because we are very committed to you. Reach out if you need anything, have any questions. We are here for you, and we appreciate your time very, very much tonight. And I want to say thank you to Greg and Cozy. Thank you, guys. Aww. Thank you. Thanks for staying on board, everybody. And thanks, Chris and Cozy. And Cozy, it's a pleasure working this year with you um, and the group of uh, attendees today. Thanks for everybody stayed on. Uh, I'd love to see when people come on and don't drop off. It looks like everybody stayed on. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can't be a captive, but um, let us know. Uh, we're here. We're here to help. And I think that's the, the beauty of having the Cozies and the Chris's in this world is you're here to help and they want to see people excel. So thank you both. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thank you for letting us be a part of your lives this evening. We've got a couple of slides we're going to throw up there for you. That includes a lovely discount code. Wait, Chris, this is your lines. I'll take your line. oh, you're, baby, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, this is a really sweet discount. These products are already, in my opinion, very well priced for the quality products you're receiving. Uh, but with this discount, and those of you who are just like never tried the product before, they've got a great travel size kit. So with the 20% off, you're getting a really good deal to try this out. Try it out because I know you're going to want to get more after you try it out. Um, for me as a clinician, honestly, it's made my life so much easier because this works pretty much for every single one of my patients. Wow. Makes my life easier. All right, Paul, I think this is the part where I go for the next slide. Oh, who's that? Okay. So yes, I'm plugging my own show right now. So guys, Wednesday nights at 8.30 PM and then starting tomorrow, Wednesday mornings at 11 AM Eastern time, I'm starting a new show. In addition, it's going to be about the strong body exercise program. So I'm going to be going through exercises. I have two beautiful models coming on board. So guys, put your phone alarm on for 11 AM on Wednesday mornings. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah. All right, and guys, any questions, seriously, you can contact any one of us. We are very easy to find. Chris is your main gal right here. You can see her email address at the bottom there. Any comments, any questions, any feedback that you have on VitalFit, she is your gal. And if you have, uh, for whatever reason, trouble finding that email, you can email me, message me, or Greg anywhere on social media. That's right. Right on. All right. Is that it? Did I get it all? You did. It. Nice work. Well, Thank you. It's, been a, it's been a great 2021, ladies. Mm, amazing. I appreciate you. And yeah. I appreciate everyone for participating. All right, and guys. You to finish. Look at this cute little 3D printed little kids press CCs. Look at that. Isn't that the cutest thing in the world? Like, no, it, it can fit my finger. I got such big fingers. <laughs> or my thumb. Okay. Isn't that, very cute? <laughs> Isn't that cute? That is. No, ah. Okay, Love we're going to do a whole new webinar on that. That's all. I know. Okay. I know.
So All right. Excited. Pete, All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. Out, everybody. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Appreciate All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. See you later.